In this video, we're going to take a look at factoring trinomials that have a leading coefficient of 1. Or another way we could look at this is things that are in the form x squared plus bx plus c. Now, if we notice, there's four different ways that the signs can show up in these trinomials. We can have plus plus, we can have minus plus, we can have plus minus, we can have minus minus. It turns out that this second one right here is going to be key in determining what the signs of our two binomials that these are going to break up into are going to be. So if the second sign right here is a plus, then it's going to be both signs are going to be the same as this first one. So in this case, it's going to break up into two binomials, and the signs here are going to be plus and plus, because this is plus then they're both this sign. In this one, we've got a plus here, and so that means they're going to be both this sign, and in this case it's minus, so it's going to be minus, minus. Over here, this second sign is going to tell us what we need to do, and since when it's minus, the general form is going to be plus, one's plus, and one's minus, and in the same way, when that second sign is minus, our, we're going to have plus and minus. Now, that makes sense because, remember, when we FOIL this stuff back out, in order to get a positive third term there, we're going to have to have a negative times a negative to get that positive third term. And this one's negative, so we've got to have two negatives to get that negative in the, the middle term. Again, over here, in order to get a negative on that right here, we need to have a positive times a negative. That gets us the negative. So, And then we have to take care of this positive and this negative, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, so then, first terms are pretty straightforward. All we do is look at whatever variable this is. In this case, I've got x's all over, so it's just going to be x and x because x times x gets us x squared. I'm going to go ahead and fill in all those x's and x's. x and x, x and x. Okay. Then, now we've got to start uh, doing a little investigation here. What we're going to be looking for are factors of this number because, remember, that last term is formed when we multiply these last terms in our two binomials. So whatever these are, when I multiply them, I have to get that. Well, in this case, let's see. What can I multiply to get 21? I can multiply 1 times 21. And I could also multiply... Excuse me. I can also multiply 3 times 7. Well, which one is it? Hmm. The key comes in the middle term. If we look here, remember we're going to get that middle term is going to be a combination of two terms as we're foiling this. It's going to be this times that and this times that. Well, in this case, I want those things when I add them together to give me 10. So which terms of 21 when I add them together give me 10? Well, that would be 3 and 7. And I could write those in either order I want. This could be plus 7, plus 3, or vice versa. Order doesn't matter. Commutative property of multiplication tells us that. Now, a last important piece here. We should be able to FOIL this back out and get what we started with. That's a good test. If you're asked to factor, this is your answer, but to FOIL it is just one little very important test to make sure we factored it correctly. So remember FOILing, we take x times x, which gives us x squared, then we have x times 7, which is 7x, 3 times x, which is 3x, and then 3 times 7, which is 21. In the middle, I had 3x and 7x, so I combine those, and I get 10x. So sure enough, it works out. Then, let's take a look at this next one. Similar situation, we've got the same signs here. So let's see. 27 is what I want to get, plus 27. So factors of 27 that are going to add up to 
negative 12. Hmm, what gets me 27? 1 times 27, 3 times 9, 3 times 9, let's see, 3 plus 9 also adds up to 12. So perfect, we've got 9 here and 3 here. Let's check it. x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Let me just jot that in here so we don't forget that one. Negative 3x, then negative 9 times x is negative 9x. Then negative 9 times negative 3 gives us the plus 27. So we're good there. Then finally, these two combine. Notice they combine to get that negative 12, which is what we're looking for. Okay, now, over here, we have that minus as the sign of our third term in our trinomial. And in that case, we said that the signs are going to be plus and minus. So, how do things change? Well, now what I'm going to be doing is looking for factors of 24 that have a difference of 10. Because, if you notice, the middle terms are going to be opposite signs. So, let's just see how that works out here. We want 24 factors of 24 with a difference of 10. Hmm, factors of 24. 124, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. Which of those have a difference of 10? 2 and 12. Now, hmm, I've got to get a positive 10 out here. So where do I want to put that? 12, where do I want to put the 2? Well, turns out that we want to put the larger number with whatever sign we want to end up with. So in this case, I want the 12 with the positive because, and the plus because that's going to give me 12x when I FOIL here. And then the other one's going to be with the minus, so that's going to give me minus 2x and 12x minus 2x gives me positive 10x. If I would flip those around, then I would have negative 10x, which is not what I want because this is plus 10x. Again, we could FOIL that out to make sure we've got the right answer, and I believe that we do. All right, then let's take a look at this last one here. In this case, we're looking for factors of 15. Again, we know we're dealing with factors of 15 because those last terms when I FOIL, they're going to give me that minus 15. Also, that makes sense for the plus minus. Then, factors of 15 that have a difference of negative 2. Okay, negative, I want to get negative. What are factors of 15? 1 and 15, 3 and 5. I want to end up with negative 2. Hmm. Well, 3 and 5 have a difference of 2. I want a negative, so put the larger one with the sign I want to end up with. So right over here, negative 5 and then plus 3. So again, FOIL it out, make sure it works out. So we have x times x, which is x squared. Then we have x times negative 5, which would be negative 5x. Negative 5x here. And then 3 times x would be plus 3x. Then 3 times negative 5 would be negative 15. So combine those two in the middle there. Negative 5x plus 3x is going to give me that negative 2x. All right, factoring trinomials with a leading coefficient of 1. What we want to do is first look at this sign right here. So look at the sign of c. If it's a plus, then both signs both will be the sign of the B part. So either plus plus or plus minus. If the sign of C is negative, then both are, excuse me, not both we're going to have a plus and a minus. So if the sign of C is positive, then both signs will be whatever the sign of B is. And if the sign of C is negative, we're going to have plus and minus. 
Hope this video is helpful as you're working your way through factoring these things. Uh, if you keep working hard at it, I know you'll do very well. Hope uh, you keep hard after it and you can do it.